to this week's version of the Leadership Formula Vlog, where we take your individual personality traits and apply them to leadership best practice. And why does that approach matter? Because you're way more likely to positively affect and impact yourself, your people, and your performance when you operate from your strengths. So today, specifically, we're talking about the discovery portion of the Leadership Formula, and we're calling today's episode Discovery at Myrtle Beach. Um, for those of you that are over 40, it sounds like a Nancy Drew or Hardy Boys mystery, doesn't it? Discovery at Myrtle Beach. I kind of like that. If you're, if you're under 40, go Google it. You'll figure it out. So last week, I had the opportunity to speak at a conference at Myrtle Beach, and the timing was such that we were able to pick up Sam and Jack, the younger two of our boys that are in college, as they finished their finals, and we took them with us so they could travel with us to Myrtle Beach. And so, because this is about discovering and discovery, I want to share with you three discoveries that Christy and I found um, over the three days that we traveled together. Discovery number one, college boys are filthy, disgusting animals. After about 28 years of marriage now, Christy has domesticated me. She has tamed the rebellious bad boy that I once was. Sam and Jack still roam free. <sighs> disgusting. Our hotel room became their wildlife habitat for several days. It smelled and sounded like a jungle in there. It took a whip and a chair just for me to get them in bed every night. Discovery number two. Christy and I figured out that we have adjusted quite nicely to the empty nest lifestyle. Thank you very much. As a matter of fact, having two additional roommates proved a bit of a shock, especially to Christy, because my opinion and my ideas really don't count for much anymore. But for her, whoo. A little bit of an adjustment there. Who were these two young voices that were vaguely familiar but actually thought they had a say in what we were going to do for the evening or where we were going to eat? <laughs> Silly. So based on discoveries one and two, the third discovery I figured out after a 10-hour drive to there, three days at Myrtle Beach, and on the drive home, I was facing 10 hours, I actually fantasized about leaving them at a rest area several times. Another discovery that we made that wasn't really a discovery but a reminder was uh, how different Jack and Sam are. As a matter of fact, the picture that you see now on the screen is at Myrtle Beach at 3 a.m. in the morning. Uh, and it was taken um, on Sam's camera and wanted to try a new technique so he could try out some of his digital media skills. Uh, and he had seen this uh, and observed it and wanted to try it out from his classes and from our niece, niece Sydney's husband, Malcolm. So after setting up the tripod and on the right shutter, they sat in the stillness on the shores of the Atlantic Ocean at Myrtle Beach. And I can imagine the conversation between them must have gone something like this. Jack would have been wondering about a differential equation question from his engineering final. Sam would have been worried about how many people would see his Instagram post. Jack would have been calculating the speed of light from the star to the earth. Sam would have been figuring out what the caption should be to make this cool and unique. Jack would have been making sure that the details were in place for the 3 a.m. or 2 a.m. shooting. Sam would have been making sure that, I wonder if 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. would have been the right one. So I love the quote on the screen there by Mark Twain. The two most important days of your life are the day you were born and the day you figure out why. And really, I think that's critical for leaders as well as they try to figure out what their strengths are. It really has a lot to do with, you know, why they excel at what they do and why they lead the way they uh, are, their approach to leadership. And so what I use in the leadership formula is the Enneagram. Um, I believe it really is excellent for leaders because it explains our motivations. And just real quickly, I want to take you um, and show you how critical the discovery of this can affect your leadership. And so let's just take a project. You're approaching a project as a leader. There are nine different Enneagram types that would approach a project. And I want to look at each one in particular, just very quickly, how they approach the project. If you're a type one, yes, I want to get it done. Absolutely, I want to get it done. But there's a right way to get it done. If you're a type two, uh, Let's get it done, but let's worry about how we can help those around us and build relationship. If you're a type three, you can get it done effectively and efficiently, but 
there are more than one way to get it done. How can you use any means necessary? If you're a type four, get it done, but make it special, unique, and yet genuine. A type five will get something done, but only after it's been thoroughly observed and researched. A type six will get something done, but make sure that they've thought of all the road bumps or speed bumps uh, that could happen and deter the project. A seven will get it done only when forced to. <laughs> and he or she will probably enjoy themselves a little bit and have fun first by looking at YouTube videos. A type eight will have fun and let you know who's in charge while they're getting it done. And then a type nine, of course, is gonna get something done, but they're gonna be inclusive of everybody and have a very collaborative environment while they do so. Now, did we know that Sam and Jack had different Enneagram types? Absolutely. I've got them here on the screen for you. Sam, type four. Jack is a type one. So they approached the project totally differently. Sam was worried about the ambiance, creating the event to make it perfect um, and unique uh, from the picture standpoint. Jack, on the other hand, was concerned about the process and the plan. How are we going to get this done and what happens uh, to set it up just perfectly. So it's good to see them work together um, and, and accomplish this. How do you use your strengths um, when you're leading people? The leadership formula shows you how to do just that, not just taking a picture, but stuff that's way more important to you, getting the most out of yourself, your people, and your performance. Thanks for watching. See you next week.